So I tried a while ago to summarise where I thought we were internationally, and now I want to do the same sort of thing nationally, and uh, with respect to the Israel. Gaza problem. I, I, I think there are still many, many things to say about it. For example, one could talk about the very fragile rela relationship between the members of the Israel War Coalition, uh, Netanyahu, Benny Gantz, and that sort of thing. One can talk endlessly about the parallels between the uh, expected fights in the tunnels in the Gaza Strip and the fights in Mariupol, which I've done, uh, Stalingrad, Mosul, Fallujah, and so on. This um, ultimate urban guerrilla warfare where people are hiding in uh, behind brick walls, where people are come leaping out of tunnels, where there is street fighting and um, deep opposition to a ground invasion, a desperation and a religious zealotry. None of this um, suggests this is going to be an easy campaign. And, and at the same time, there's the fermenting international anxiety about whether or not this is justified, whether the rules of war are being followed, and even if every comment is prefaced by a condemnation of Hamas's terrorist attack on October the 7th, which, without any question, is a war crime, is a, is, is a crime against humanity and, and so on. The taking of hostages, the killing of innocent women and children, uh, and, and, and no matter how this is then presented by the Israeli side or by the Palestinian side, that is a certainty. Uh, I think as is the certainty that Israel has a right to self-defense. What is not a certainty is the siege and then the ground invasion and the way that has happened, and indeed the various documents which have emerged over the last few days, um, some of which we, you know, we, 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 we could access long ago, um, but the one particular document about uh, which suggests some sort of ethnic cleansing on the sort of scale that we saw in Bosnia. So, uh, but that is not to say that is happening or that is intended. That certainly, it's only to say that that is a document which has been found from the Likud group, and uh, and of course, it's it's again absolutely wrong to think that there is a monolithic um, Israeli position because on the one hand you've got the secular. Israeli position. On the other hand, you've got, for example, the extreme religious position and uh, the, 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 the very intolerant position, which you would find in Mayor Sherim. And maybe I should go on and talk about that at some point in a later stage. Um, but, to, but to bring this back to the domestic side, Keir Starmer's struggle to define what his position should be, and that is partly predicated on the on the sense that he's he he's a different character of politician to um, the mayor of London or the mayor of um, any 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 other Labour Labour mayor. Um, he's he's a different he's a different category of of politician because he expects to be prime minister and therefore he needs to be prime ministerial. And so I think it's important for him to establish that Israel has the right to defend itself and to keep on at that. And the term ceasefire is a technical term. And uh, the ceasefire or truce, and that effectively would be an end to the campaign and an acceptance by Israel of Hamas's brutality. Hamas will effectively have uh, been proven to have, um, to have won out by its terrorist campaign. Now, I think there are many ways this could have gone, um, and, and, and certainly the response of Netanyahu is not one I would have advocated. But 
whatever whatever the position, it cannot end up with Hamas being vindicated, and because that gives that gives a um, uh, a, a, a red flag to uh, that, that, that that gives credibility to any terrorist organization. Now, in Keir Starmer's speech, one of the interesting points which he made was uh, that the line, do not overestimate the UK's capacity to influence events. That's something that I was saying earlier, that um, yes, it's an excuse, but it's reasonable to point out that the UK, particularly since Brexit, has significantly less authority and influence on the world stage. And simply to harp on about a ceasefire when it's not even a credible option is to is to demonstrate an inadequacy um, and also to demonstrate a lack of support for America which has already taken a very firm stand where it is clearly supporting Israel but at the same time chiding Netanyahu on the sidelines to respect humanitarian values and to pause so that that element of caution which America is advocating makes it much easier for Keir Starmer to call for humanitarian pauses as indeed some of the European nations have called, called for humanitarian pauses because that is a credible possibility and then it's trying to make a, take advantage of those humanitarian pauses to get our aid into position so that it can be wheeled in to help, get as much pressure onto the Israeli government and the powers in the surrounding Middle East as possible so that when there is a humanitarian pause, refugees can be taken out, not just by the Rafa gate, but I, I suggest, um, given the fact that Netanyahu allowed Rishi Sunak to use a plural, um, when when talking about exits from Gaza, to, to to press on that, that Israel should be sharing its own, uh, Israel should be accepting its own share of refugees from Gaza, particularly because it is invested in this ground offensive, and and in the end, it makes sense, because Israel is going to have to deal with the aftermath of this and. The sooner it deals with the Palestinian Authority, and I think the more it dignifies Hamas with this sort of campaign, it's going to have to deal with the Hamas Authority as well, then the, the sooner it does that, the better. My worry is that the more the rhetoric uh, grows, the longer it will be before there's any form of peaceful resolution. And then the, 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 the icing on the cake is, is, is the one bit of our government system that has failed absolutely to um, march with the mood and, uh, and is almost exploiting the problems and that is Suella Braverman talking about the march of hate. It's adversarial, it's unnecessary and yes we should be um, discouraging uh, hate speech. We should be discouraging the waving of Hamas flags. I think it's illegal. Um, and, and, and certainly there are pockets of anti-Semitic chanting in these marches, and that should be discouraged. But to talk about a march of hate is foolish. It's foolish because I don't think that's what it is. I think what you've got in in these marches is is two different communities: the the um, the, the, the pro-Israeli community and the pro-Palestinian community, both marching on uh, different times. I think it's a great shame that the march in Golders Green was curtailed the other day, while the march in the centre of London for Palestine was uh, did go ahead. Um, and I think the, the police gave spurious reasons why the march 
why the um, assembly in Golders Green should not go ahead. I, th I, I think we, I think we've done very well in balancing the uh, the opposing sides and trying to uh, trying to establish ourselves as a fair and respectful society. I think we need to go much further, but I don't think it's helped by Suella Braverman's um, shrill calls. Or, or indeed, a, of um, Robert Jenrick's um, poodling in the same in the in, in the same shrill fashion. It's unnecessary. There are laws that exist. It's simply a matter of applying them, and perhaps, if necessary, um, encouraging encouraging people rather than threatening people. But the, the the rhetorical flourish about a march of hate is just absurd, and it's ratcheting up the rhetoric and rabble-rousing in a completely um, uh, aggressive and unnecessary way. But is that anything new from Suella Bravman? No, it's not.